Okay, let's look at the problems in test one. In the first question, we show the following is true. Now the graph of f of x is equal to 10 to x has a vertical asymptote. Okay, let's try to uh, graph this one. So 10 to x has this type of behavior. Uh, you can also check it from the table. If you put some values here, you will see them. And uh, it doesn't have a vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote is, okay, it's, it's behaving like that. The vertical asymptote means this, something like this here. So if this is a vertical asymptote, the function behaves like this or like this. But we don't have such situation here. So this is, it doesn't have a vertical asymptote. It has indeed a horizontal asymptote. This is a horizontal asymptote. And this is false. So uh, f of x equal to 1 over 2 to the x is a decreasing function. OK, now uh, if we try to do the graph of it, so it will be this way. OK, it will be decreasing. So we can also see this one by you know, putting some values for x and make the table. You will, si uh, you will see them here. It's a decreasing function. And this is true. And the graph of y equal to e to x has no x-intercept. Now, um, you can check it here. This is something like the e to x is, uh, behaves like an e uh, 10 to x. It's the same type behavior, not exactly same, but same type behavior, because the base is bigger than 1. Uh, so e to x is, it has this. Uh, type of behavior. Now it has no x-intercept. It doesn't uh, it doesn't touch the x-axis. Or another way is uh, this one here. Or okay, this is true. Uh, another way of seeing it is like uh, try to find the x-intercept. Like I said, y equal to zero, and you will get like e to x equal to zero. When you try to get this one, you will get x equal to ln 0, which is undefined. So you see there is no x-intercept here. So this is true. 2 and 3 is it's true. Now, which of the following is true about the log base 5 of x? And uh, when, you, uh, when you do the graph, of, when you sketch the graph of this function, it will have a typical behavior. It will have a vertical asymptote. The y value, the y axis will be the vertical asymptote, and uh, it will uh, rise. I mean, it will increase this way. So it has a vertical asymptote. This is the vertical asymptote here. So this one here, this line, is the vertical asymptote. So this is true. And the range of f of x is 0 to infinity. No. We need to take the projection. So the, the range of f of x is uh, not 0 to infinity. It's minus infinity to infinity, as you can see here. And the domain of f of x is all real numbers. No. Uh, when you look at the projection onto the x-axis, you will see it just only positive values and f of passes through 0 1 so we put here 0 you will I mean for when you put 0 here so this f of x will be undefined so this is not true so these are all false now let's try to solve this one uh, you okay we can combine these two this is minus we can write 2x minus 6 divided by x minus 1 equal to 1. Now uh, you can write this one log base 10. If you don't see a base in the log, so it means it's base 10. So how can you uh, change this one to exponential form? If you will say it's the 10 to the first power is equal to 2x minus 6 over x minus 1. Okay, then I will do it here. 
uh, 2x minus 6 over x minus 1. Like you can do a cross multiplication here. You will, after solving this, I mean, I will not solve it, that x equal to 1 over 2. But the answer is not 1 over 2 because we have to check this one. Check in the ordinal equation. So when you check this one in here or here, so you will see, for example, in the second one, you will have log 1 over 2 minus 1. So this will be negative value. So log does not accept negative. It will be undefined. So 1 over 2 cannot be a solution. So solution will be the empty set. Uh, this question, uh, we want to write this one in radians. So uh, here we use, I'm, I'm using this rule here. Phi radians is always equal to uh, to 180 degrees. So you can say uh, 225 is how many? Okay, 225, sorry, 225 degree is how many radians? So you can write it here like 225 degree is how many? You can say x. Now you cross multiply these two and then you got phi times 225 is equal to x times 180. Then divide both sides with 180, and after the sim simplification, you'll end up with D. Now, uh, if the degree measures of two supplementary angles are these, uh, so what are these angles? So you, so you basically add them, and uh, they make equal to 10x minus uh, 20, which is equal to 180, because they're supplementary angles, their sum is 180. So then uh, 10x uh, minus 20 is 180 means you send this one to the other side, you get plus 20. So you got 10x equal to 200, 200, so it will give you x equal to 20. And then we will put these values here and here. So uh, it will be uh, 80 minus 25, which is 55. 20 times 60, it will be 125, so we will have this one. Now a circle has a radius uh, of 4 centimeters, uh, and if the length of the arc corresponding to the central angle theta in the circle is 8 centimeters, what is the measure of theta in degrees? So a circle has a radius 4, okay, we have a circle, let's say it's 4, and uh, this circle has this, um, can I, let's say this is a circle. And if the length of the arc corresponding to central angle theta, so angle theta, let's say this is theta, and if the arc here corresponding to theta is this, the arc, so this arc length here has, uh, this is equal to 8 centimeters, and this is 4 centimeters, the radius. Now then it says, what is theta in degrees? So uh, we have this formula here, the arc length is always equal to, uh, theta times r the radius, but when doing uh, when using this uh, formula, we always have to keep in our mind theta always here, always assumed in radians. So when you solve this one, you will get theta is equal to eight over four. Okay, this is two but two radians, so this is important, two radians. So then you change the radian to degree, and then you have to change it to degree, so how can you do it like phi radian is equal to 180 degrees, and then uh, two radian is equal to uh, x, so phi times x equal to 180 times two, so x will be 360 divided by phi, so we'll end up with c. Now, let the angle beta is an acute angle with sine beta is equal to 1 over square 3. And uh, it says find secant, secant 90 minus beta by using cofunction identities. Here, the keyword is cofunction identities. And now, uh, if you remember, the, cos, uh, the function identity says secant 90 minus beta is equal to cosecant beta. Now, this is one of the function identities we have. And then, what is cosecant beta? This is 1 over sine beta. 
what is sine beta? It's given here, so you put this here, 1 over 1 over square 3, and then you, you end up with B. Now, let's try to solve this one. In a triangle ABC, it is given that the, uh, the angle ABC is 90 degrees. So if we try to make the triangle, so this is our triangle, let this be our triangle here. B is 90 degrees, so you have to put B 90 degrees. Now AB is 4 centimeters, so A will be here or here. So let's pick one of them. Okay, let this be A, then this will be C. And four, this is four centimeters. And then sine theta is equal to one over square root five. But what is theta? Theta is the angle ACB. So ACB. So you look at the middle on here, it will be theta here. Theta is this. So you can say it from here. Now, uh, what is given about theta? Theta has this property, sine theta is equal to one over square root five. Now, we have these uh, two things given to us, and it's asking what this, the length of BC. Now, let's try to relate this four, this uh, four theta uh, and sine theta. How do they relate? I mean, if you write sine theta, if you write sine theta by using uh, the triangle here, how do you write sine theta? Okay, let's write this sine theta by using the right triangle. So from the triangle, you can write sine theta as this sine theta is equal to uh, 4 over AC, right? And at the same time, we have the same sine theta given. So we can match them. So we have... I mean, uh, together, these two, this one and this one together, we have 1 over squared 5 is equal to 4 over AC. This AC will turn out 4 times squared 5. Now, we have, now, we have AC is 4 square root 5. Now, can we find uh, 4 squared 5? Can we find BC? The BC is asked. So, I uh, use the Pythagorean. This BC squared plus 4 squared is equal to 4 squared 5 squared. And you can find BC. BC will turn out to be um, 8. So, you can, you can check this one. Uh, when we look at this problem here, uh, cosine 30, uh, it's square root 3 over 2, and sine 60, square root 3 over 2, and then minus negative 45 is 1. So these two will make 2 square root 3 over 2, which makes square root 3, and then we have minus 1. So we will end up with square root 3 minus 1. Now, uh, let's look at this problem here. Uh, we want to find x, uh, we, we are given 30, we can use sine 30 or cosine 30 here by using these two uh, sides, but the problem here, we don't know this one, uh, let's try to find it, so let's say this one is, let's say a, now let's try to relate this a and 3 squared 3 and then uh, 45. So, how can you put them together? The sine 45 with respect to this triangle, it will be the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So, the opposite divided by the hypotenuse is this one. Now, what is sine 45? So, from the triangle, we have this, but we know sine 45 is square root 2 over 2. We know it. If you don't know, you have to memorize it, by the way. 3 squared, 6 and squared, 2, and this is 2a. And when you try to do, okay, the squared 12, so it will be 2 squared, 3 after the simplification. We end up with this is a has to be 3 squared, 3. Now, the question comes to here, uh, how can we relate x and 30 and uh, 3 squared 3. So is there any trigonometric value um, 
relating them I mean connecting uh, connecting them to each other uh, well we can use uh, cosine 30 here because cosine 30 uses uh, the adjacent side and the hypotenuse and here let's say cosine 30 should be equal to by using this triangle here uh, this one it will be the adjacent side 3 squared 3 divided by x so by the way what is it in our memory this is square 3 over 2 all right, so we already memorized this one and uh, we put it here we get x equals square, x squared 3 equal to 2 3 square 3 and then you know after cancellation we will end up with 6 now if the terminal side of the angle theta is in quadrant 3 so we have uh, theta in quadrant 3 and it passes through the point x negative square 10 and tangent 10 is equal to 1 over square 5 uh, which of the following is the exact value of x so let's try to visualize the, uh, the angle the terminal side of the angle theta is in the third quadrant so which means theta is in here so it will be theta okay this is theta and its terminal side is here and it says it passes through the point x negative square root 10 and it says uh, and also we know the tangent theta is given as 1 over square root 5 and we want to okay now uh, do we know a point on the line this is uh, yeah it, on the terminal side it will be yes x negative square 10 this is the point now how can we relate tangent theta and this point remember this if you know a point on the terminal side of the angle this is x y automatically you can say it's x and y you know can be here or here or here it doesn't matter okay so the formula is still same tangent theta is equal to y over x so then we can uh, from here with the same logic we can say tangent theta has to be equal to uh, y value of the point this is negative square 10 divided by x now we got the tangent uh, theta uh, by using two things uh, one of them is okay one of them is from the point the other is given in the equation i mean it, it, uh, given in the in the question so we match them So when you solve x, so x turns out to be negative 5 squared 2. Now, uh, let, let's look at this problem here. If the terminal side of the angle theta in standard position intersect the unit circle, this is the key point here, is the key information is the unit circle, uh, at 3 over 5 and negative 4 over 5. What do we know about the unit circle? The unit circle is the circle which has the radius 1. That's one thing, and we know in the, in the radius, uh, okay, in the, in a unit circle, when you pick any, okay, when you draw a central angle here, theta, uh, its terminal side into when uh, it, its terminal side intersect with uh, the unit circle at a point, uh, the coordinates of this point will be automatically cosine theta. And sine theta. This is what we have here. Okay, we have to know this one. Now here it says it's um, it has three over five and negative four over five. The central uh, it intersect with three over five and negative four over five. So this here automatically says cosine theta has to be this, and this one here should be sine theta. Now then we can use cosine theta as 3 over 5 and cosecant theta is 1 over sine theta. 1 over sine theta is, we know, 1 over sine theta is 3 over 5 and sine theta is this one here, minus 4 over 5. So it will be, so this was 3 over 5 times 5 over negative 4, so then this will be 3 over 4. Now, 
uh, cosine theta is if cosine theta is equal to negative 1 over square root of 3 and tangent theta is less than 0. Which of the following is equal to sine theta? <coughs> now, the first thing you have to do is theta will be in which quadrant? Theta is in which quadrant? Okay, cosine is negative and tangent is negative because cosine is negative, tangent negative. And which uh, quadrant is it? This quadrant is the second quadrant. So you have to first say theta is in second quadrant. Then you use its reference angle. The reference angle of this one will be of the alpha. You can directly say cosine alpha here is equal to the positive value of cosine. This is 1 over square root 3. Then you can use then you can use the uh, the angle I mean the right triangle here. You can form it. So this is uh, square root three. The alpha here is square, one over square root three. This is one. They just sit side and square root three. And this part here, if you say a, then it will be a squared plus one squared is equal to square root three. Then a turns out to be square root two. So we end up with this triangle here. Uh, alpha and this is square root 3, this is 1, this is square root 2, and we end up with sine alpha. Sine alpha is square root 2 over square root 3. So, uh, okay, are we done yet? No. Uh, uh, theta is in quadrant 2, it means sine theta will be equal to plus sine alpha here because I'm using this property of theta in quadrant 2 because if it was in 3 I would say minus so sine alpha is this one here square 2 over 3 square 3 over two, square 2 over 3 so sine theta will be equal to this one and in the choices you don't see that because in the choices uh, you have to rationalize the denominator, so it will be squared 6 over 3, which is D. If the angle is alpha is in standard position and the terminal side of the angle is, is the line y equal to negative 2x, where x is bigger than 0. Find secant alpha by choosing a point on the terminal side of alpha. So this question is basically telling um, this. So if you know a point on the terminal side of, um, for example, okay, assume this one is alpha. If you know the a, a point on there, I mean, this, you can find the uh, sine alpha, you know, and uh, cosine alpha, and you know, tangent alpha, and by using them, you can find secant alpha. Uh, you know, what will be secant alpha here? This secant alpha will be 1 over um, cosine alpha, and cosine alpha here is like x over square root of x squared plus y squared, and this will be again square root of x squared plus y squared over x. Now, <clears throat> The problem here is finding a point on the on the uh, terminal side. Okay, this is one information here. Let's keep it here. Uh, it says alpha is in standard position. The terminal side of the angle is the line y equal to negative 2x. So let's try to draw the line here. y is equal to negative 2x is equal to, uh, you know, something like this. I mean, if, how do I... How can I do this? Like you can make a table. This is a line equation, so you can say, uh, put zero here, you will get zero, and put one here, you get minus two. So you will end up with one minus two, and this. Uh, so with the ruler, you can draw it. But here it says x bigger than zero, so you have to take only this piece of it. So you have to take this piece, and then uh, by choosing a point, this. The thermal side of the angle is this part now. So our theta or alpha is this. Now we take a point here. How can you take a point? Like put x equal to 1. And then since it's y equal to negative 2x, 
it will be uh, negative 2 here. So then you can use the formula. Let's take an alpha formula is uh, square root of uh, minus 2 squared, now 1 squared plus the 2 squared divided by 1. So I'm using this formula here. This one for this point is 1 minus 2. So then this will be squared 5 over 1, which is B. Okay, what is the value of tangent 35 and secant 130? Uh, this is secant 180 degrees. Uh, let's try to solve this one by using the reference. For this one, you can use the reference angle and tangent under 35 is this one, I mean, under 35, this is 45 degrees. So this will be equal to tangent 45, but is it plus or minus? Here tangent is minus, so then it has to be equal to minus tangent 45, which is minus 1. Now when it comes to 180 degrees, so we can use the uh, unit circle, because second 180 degree is what? Okay, let's check. Second 180 degree is uh, 1 over cosine 180 degrees. And what is cosine 180 degrees? You can use the unit circle. If you use the unit circle, you know, this here, this point here will be 180 degrees, and this will be uh, the point corresponding to cosine 180 and the sine 180. So this point here will be negative 1 and 0. So then 100, cosine 180 should be minus 1, be right here, minus 1. So this has to be 1 over minus 1, which is minus 1. So we got minus 1 here plus minus 1 here, so it will be minus 2. Okay, let's look at this problem here. Uh, which of the following statements are or is true? The period of f of x equal to 3 plus 4 sine uh, 2x plus 1 is equal to pi. Is it true? Now, when calculating the period of a function, you don't check here, you don't check here, you don't check here, but you check, just check uh, the period of this function, which is 2 pi, and then you divide, this is how you get the period here, 2 pi divided by the, uh, the coefficient of x, which is 2. So it is true that this is pi. So this is true. Now, the domain of cosecant x is, so let's look at the other one, cosine, cosine, cosecant x is a set of uh, all x's such that x is not equal to k pi. So it will be all real numbers except the multiples of k pi. So let's see if it is true. So secant x is equal to, we can say this is 1 over sine x. So uh, what makes this one 0? It shouldn't be equal to 0. And uh, 0 makes it 0. And then uh, pi makes it 0. And then 2 pi makes it 0. So as you see, all the multiples of pi makes it 0. So for this reason, this is true. So we are excluding these values. We cannot you know, take them because they will make all sine x equal to zero, which will make this one undefined. And when it comes to the domain of tangent x is all real numbers, this is false, y uh, tangent pi over 2 is undefined. So, undefined, so pi over 2 is not in the domain of, domain of tangent x. So we can say pi over 2, if pi over 2 is not in the domain, of course, the domain is not all real numbers 10. So it will be 1, 2. Which of the following is an even function? Uh, you can try those. Like, how can you check the evenness? You look at f of x and you look at f of minus x. If they are same, so if they are same, so we say f is even. Now let's check. Tangent 2 minus x. Uh, which is uh, tangent minus 2x is equal to minus 2. And you, tangent is odd, so you can take this negative out. So 
the f of x here is not equal to minus, oh sorry, this is not equal to minus f of x, uh, f of minus x, sorry. So you see, I check these two, tangent to x is not equal to this one. Now, uh, you can also try the others, but here you will see So you will see them. The sine squared is not equal to. I mean, the sine squared is even function. So you can say here, okay, f of x is uh, sine squared x, and then right here, f of minus x equal to uh, sine squared minus x. You can write this one here like see, yeah, sine minus x squared. This means like this is minus sine x because sine is odd. And here take the square, so it means like you're taking the square of it, so it will be plus here. Then you have sine squared x. So you see they're the same. So these are the same, so we can say this is even. Uh, now, okay, uh, I can write the same thing here, like tangent to x, and this is f of minus x is equal to minus tangent minus 2x, and this will be uh, by using the ordinance, so minus tangent 2x. So as you see, these are not the same. Also, this is odd. And you can do the same calculation, or this will be odd, this will be even, this, this will be neither of them check. So you can do a check, you can check it. Now, which of the following is the exact value of tangent 3 pi, negative uh, 3 pi over 4, and, and cosine uh, 30 pi or 32 pi or 3. Now, um, what you can do here is the using the periods here. You can use the period here. The period of uh, tangent is pi. So then it means like when you can add pi and then you will get the same thing here. So uh, indeed, this is tangent 3 pi or 4 will be equal to this. When you add that, add this, so you will end up with tangent pi over 4, and which will give you 1. So this is 45 degrees, so we know this is 1. Okay, this part, we did it. Now let's look at the other part here. Now the, uh, the period of cosine is, like the, the period of cosine is 2 pi. So it means uh, you can, okay, you can say that cosine 32 pi over 3 is equal to cosine 32 pi over 3 minus a, a, a multiple of 2 pi, 2 pi times something here. So we, at um, mudaf to pi in Arabic, it's mudaf to pi. So we can choose any number here, it will work. The number, a good number, uh, to reduce the difference. Uh, how about like five times two a, two pi? Sorry, it will be, and this will be sine thirty-two pi over uh, three minus ten pi. So when you do this calculation, you will end up with cosine two pi over three. And uh, if you look at this one, this will be cosine one hundred twenty degrees. And uh, its reference angle will be cosine 60, but cos 120 cosine is in the second quadrant, and this, this is in the second quadrant. It has to be negative, you know, by all STC. So then what is cosine 60? It's 1 over 2, so it will be minus 1 over 2. So then we have minus 1 over 2, 1 plus minus 1 over 2, this will be 1 over 2. So this is the answer. And when it comes to the 19th question, it says which one is false? Uh, the period of cotangent is pi. This is true because the period of pi, uh, the tangent and the cotangent is same and which are pi. So this will be true. And the range of secant x is negative infinity to minus one and one to infinity. This is also true. And the other one is, it is not possible to have sine x is equal to 2 for any real number x. This is also true. Sine x can be 
a number between only minus 1 and 1. It takes the values between minus 1 and 1. Uh, the, this one is a false one. Okay, you can check this is not an odd function. Okay, let's do it this way, like f of x is equal to tangent 4x uh, times sine x. Now, what is f of minus x? So, check it. So, this has to be minus, okay, sorry, tangent minus 4x here. And then sine minus four minus x. So this is an odd function, so you can take this minus out. And this is an odd function, you can take this minus out. So you see this minus and minus, it will make plus. And then we will end up with tangent 4x is equal to 4x times sine, sine x. So as you see this one here, f of minus x and f of x, they have the same uh, output so they are same so if they are same it makes even not odd so this is false so when it comes to the last question uh, the range okay well, how can you find the range of this function here the, the range of cosine of this function of cosine 2x cosine of anything will be between 1 and minus 1 with this equality so uh, minus one and one is included and we want to get something for one plus three cosine two x uh, I need three here so I multiply with three both sides I and mean, all sides here so then it will be negative three bigger than three less than three cosine two x and less than okay, or equal to three then we add one to all sides and we end up with this like this will be four and this will be minus two so the range will be minus two to four okay this is how we do for the range for the domain you have to check this one anyway it was a little uh, fast but i had to do it this way because uh, the video and uploading the video i'm having some trouble nowadays so I don't want it to be too loaded.